Hello everyone, this is Amritpal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about SVR, Support Vector Regression. In my previous videos, I have talked about linear regression, multiple linear regression, polynomial regression, right? In this video, I'll be talking about SVR, Support Vector Regression. So let's start. So in this case, you can see this uh, Support Vector Regression was invented uh, way back in 90s by this guy, Vladimir Repnik and his colleagues who were working uh, at the at and Bell Labs. Right, and lot of support vector machine and support vector regression are discussed in Vladimir Vepnik's book, The Nature of Stat Statistical Learning, 1992. Right, so this is a little history about that, how it got evolved. Right, uh, he, he has got invented by this guy, and a lot of stuff has been written in this book. Moving further, so the, to understand what SVR is, we have got two plots. On the left side, we have applied simple linear regression, on the right side, we have SVR available. So in the, in the both sides, what we have in common that we have an identical set of points. You can see on the both sides, we have a same set of points available. They are exactly a replica of the points, right? On the left side, we have applied the linear uh, regression, right? So in this case, uh, uh, how this line got derived, although I've discussed already in my one of the video that what's the meaning of simple linear regression I've implemented in R language as well. In case, in case you have missed it, I'll be putting up the link in this video. But how this line got derived, a method called ordinary least square actually has been applied to find this line. Basically what we want to do, we want to minimize the distance between this value, you can see this, this plus sign and the this one on the trend line. Actually this is y, actual value, this is y cap on the trend line, right? So uh, basically we uh, take a difference first, okay, square it and we want to minimize it. All right, this is the ordinary least square method actually. Essentially what we are doing, we are doing, uh, we just minimizing the error. So we want to have a line with the minimal error possible. So that's the intuition behind the simple linear regression. Let's, let's now come back to the SVR. So how SVR work? So in this case, instead of a simple line, you can see a tube available. This, this yellow colored portion, which is called a tube. Okay, this is the difference we have from the left side and you can see Instead of a simple line, we have a tube available and this tube has a width of epsilon. Okay, this epsilon symbol you can see on the right, right? So this uh, tube has a width of epsilon and the width has been measured vertically. It's important along the axis, not perpendicular to the tube, but vertically. So this tube itself is called as a epsilon insensitive tube. So what, that, what does that mean? That means that any point in a data set that falls inside the tube will be, will be disregarding the error. Okay, meaning is that we not be taking, we not be bothering about the points which are falling inside the uh, this tube. We'll be only be taking care of the points which are outside of the tube. Okay, so the the ones which are inside the tube, we have no worries. The the that's why it's called insensitive. We are ins we are insensitive to the points which are falling inside the tube, but we are sensitive to, to the points which are outside of the tube. Okay, so we are disregarding any kind of errors in here. That's a that's a key behind the support vector regression. It gives us the little bit of movement or little bit of buffer to our model. Uh, so that's why this they're called as a epsilon insensitive tube. All right. So moving further, in this case, uh, you can see uh, we these points which are outside of this tube are the uh, highlighted in the red red marker, and we have assigned the uh, some symbols here C1, C2, and C star. Right. So these are called as a slack variables. Okay. These are called as a slack variables okay and you can see we have also have uh, mapped uh, some lines to it you can see that on the blue lines we have mapped actually basically uh, this may be a uh, we must be wondering that why they are called as a support vector regression actually all of these points outside okay or we can say any point on this plot is a vector right so it can be represented as a vector in this two dimensional space or a multi dimensional space if we have a more features. So, so in this case, it can be represented by the two dimensional vectors. So they are all these points of a vector. Okay. All these points. So, so why they're called support vectors? Actually the ones, this one, the red markers one, one, two, three, four, five, these are called as a support vectors. Why they are called support vectors? Because they are dictating how this tube is created or they are the one who are supporting the structure or formation of this tube. That's why they're called as a, call it as support vectors. And that's why this is called as a support vector regression. All right. So here we go. That's all it's all about. I hope uh, you must have understood the about the what's the meaning of epsilon uh, insensitive tube. And before we uh, end up this video, I would like also to want to discuss this formula as well. In this formula, actually the formula for SVR, actually uh, right now I'm not talking about this initial part, the first one, 
but second one i want to discuss what the ultimate objective is to minimize the sum of ci plus ci star this one we need to minimize this okay so this is the formula we have to uh, mathematical formula behind the scenes so this this the initial part i'll be talking about in my upcoming video i hope you must have understood about the simple introduction to svr and how it is different from the simple linear regression all right so thanks for watching guys see you next video